Good morning to you and always. Uh, thank you for joining me. You know, we're hammering this idea that God deserves our love, a love that certainly takes into account and is willing to humbly acknowledge his everlasting love for us, a demonstrative, perfect love that intentionally takes us into account what is ultimately best for us, a love that makes our salvation possible in Jesus Christ if we'll simply love him back. You know, to love God is to trust and depend on him. We, we have seen that. It's to keep his commandments, ultimately. We, we've seen that. To love God is to love our brethren, to love our fellow man, and certainly well, we've talked about that. And the question becomes, do we love God? Now, regardless of the answer to that question, the reality is he loves us and he deserves and demands our love back. This morning, I want to read from Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 22. I'll have very little to say by way of commentary because it doesn't need a whole lot of commentary, but we're going to focus on um, a phrase that, that we have already covered, but one that um, really encompasses or should encompass everything that we are and are about. So I want to begin this morning in verse 23, and we'll just read down to the end of the chapter. The Bible says, on that same day, Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him, asking, teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother and his next of kin shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers with us. The first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So also the second, the third, and down to the seventh. And last of all, the woman died in the resurrection. Therefore, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had been married, for they all had married her. But Jesus answered and said to them, you're mistaken, not understanding the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, and neither marry nor are given to marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The crowds heard this. They were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. There it is again. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? in the law. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. And while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, then how does David in the spirit call him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. Jesus, the master teacher, he had an answer. He had an answer for their question. They were uh, troubling themselves with, with many things, as, as we could see here. But you know what's interesting about all of this? If they would have just simply listened to Jesus, all of these things would work themselves out. And it's the same with us. Listen, if we wanted to fix everything, if we wanted everything to change for the good, if we wanted the wickedness of this world to disappear, if, if we wanted all the hate, if we wanted all the bad that happens in our society, if we wanted it all to go away, if everybody would just do two things. Now think about that. There's so much just complexity by way of the, the solutions uh, of the world. You know, you, you turn on your news and sometimes when I'm working here in the office, I'll have it on in the background. And, and from the time you get up to the time I, I leave the office from you, know, whatever time in the morning to whatever time in the evening. I mean, it's just problem after problem after problem after problem after problem and talking head after talking head after talking head, talking head, talking head you know, this man's going to fix it. This political candidate's going to fix it. This person's going to fix it. Or, or we need to do this, or we need to pass this type of legislation or yada, yada, yada. And so we just keep talking, but we still keep continuing to have the same old problems that have plagued us from the beginning of time. What's the answer? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. What if we just did that? Now, what that means is with everything in our being, we're going to do what he says. We're going to do it his way. That would change everything. And then think about this next one. What if we all did this? I'm talking to everybody. What if everybody loved their neighbor as themselves, as their self? There'd be no more crime. There'd be no more stealing. There'd be no more lying. There'd be no more murder. There'd be no more molestation. There'd be no more, you name it. It'd all go away. Well, 
Our prayer is that those around us would turn to God, that our leaders would turn to God and just do this. Our responsibility is to show them a better way, this way. So let's get up every morning as we've been talking about it, in light of God's love for us and let's love him with everything we've got and let's love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's just do those two things. And I promise you everything else will fall right into place. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, we are most thankful. Father, we pray that you would continue to, to bless those who are hurting, comfort those who've lost loved ones, be with those who are suffering with various illnesses, be with those who are caring for them, Father. Father, we ask you to bless us today with wisdom and courage to do the right thing. Bless us with opportunities to show others, Father, that your way is the best way. Help us to love you with all that we have as you have loved us. Help us, Father, to love our neighbors as ourselves before we speak, before we do, before we react. Is this love? Is this love for them? Is this love for you? Those are the questions. Help us, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.